Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you how you can create 2D and 3D plots with SimPy and Matplotlib. So here I am importing everything that I'm going to use throughout this video. So I'm importing SimPy, I'm importing the plot functions from SimPy. So here we have the plot function that deals with 2D plots. And here we have the plot 3D functions that, as the name suggests, deals with 3D plots. I'm also importing NumPy and I'm also importing Matplotlib and the animation function from Matplotlib because I'm going to show you how you can animate a plot. OK, so let's run this cell and everything that I'm going to show in this video is from this version of SimPy. So this is the last version at the time that I'm recording this video. I need an equation to illustrate. So I'm going to use here the ideal gas law. I think that everyone in science should know these equations. OK, so we have here pressure times volume equals the amount of substance times the gas constant times temperature. OK, and the gas constant that I'm going to use here is this one, because you know that we have many values for this gas constant depending on the units that you're using. So this is the value for this units. OK, so you have here atmosphere for pressure, liters for volume, mole for amount of substance and Kelvin for temperature. OK, so let's run this cell and now I have here defined this gas constant. Since I'm using SimPy, I need to define some symbols. So here I am defining all the symbols that I'm going to need. P, V, T, R, and N. Okay, here are the meanings of each symbol. So pressure, volume, amount of substance, gas constant, and temperature. Okay, and here we have all the units that we are going to use. And I'm making here a constraint that every symbol here should be a positive number, okay? A positive real number. If you don't know what this means, please have a look in the other videos that I've made before about SimPy. I will leave the link in the description below for the playlist of all the videos. So you can tell SimPy that all these symbols should be positive numbers with this parameter here called positive. OK, so I'm passing here positive equals to true. So all the symbols here should be positive numbers. And here I am defining the ideal gas law. I'm using the EQ class, the equality class from SimPy that I've shown you before in other videos. OK, so we have here the left hand side with P times V and the right hand side with M times R times T. So let's run this cell and here we have the ideal gas law and all the symbols to find. OK, so you can solve this ideal gas law for any symbol. So here I am defining this equation for the volume. OK, so we have here that V equals RT and over P. So this is how we can use the solve function from SimPy to isolate the volume in the left hand side and in the right hand side we'll have this expression. Uh, please have a look that this is a list with only one item so we can get this first element, the only element, with the zero index, and we can assign this expression to a variable here. So we have here the volume as r times t times n over p. So what this means, this means that volume is a function of pressure, the amount of substance, and temperature. OK, and we can replace, we can substitute any of these symbols with values. So let's get the molar volume at 25 Celsius. So here I am using the subs method. This method you can use to substitute values for some symbols. So I am substituting R with gas constant and with 1 and T with this value here that's the same of 25 Celsius degrees but in Kelvin. OK, so you have here this expression for the molar volume at this temperature. So now we can make a plot with this.
And SimPy has this plot function that we have imported before. So you can pass this expression and the variable here. So we are going to plot this expression considering the P symbol. So let's run the cell and we have here this plot. It's a bit strange because we have here negative values, even though we've passed this constraint here that all this, these symbols should be positive, the plot has a negative region that we don't need. So you can pass here this to the plot function telling that this symbol should have values between 0 0.1 and 4. Okay, so you're are passing here a domain of values. Okay, so let's run the cell. And now this is what we expect as an isotherm of an ideal gas. You can also change the range of the y axis here. So you can use this parameter here, y lim. So I'm limiting the y values from 0 to 80. So here we are, we have here now this plot. But what if you want another isotherm here? Okay, so let's see, for example, if you want the isotherm for 100 degrees Celsius, what you should do. You can simply create another expression for this temperature. Okay, so you can create here the molar volume at 100 Celsius degrees Celsius. Okay, so let's run this cell and you can pass each expression for the plot function. Okay, so now you have two isotherms here. But if you want more curves, if you want more isotherms, maybe it's not a good thing to create a lot of expressions. It should have a better way to add more isotherms in this plot. And that's what I'm going to show you. Because if you pay close attention here, you can see that this is a matplotlib graph. You can see here the default colors of matplotlib and you have the usual appearance of a matplotlib graph. Okay, so SimPy under the hood use matplotlib. And this means that you can leverage your knowledge of matplotlib to make it easier to add more isotherms here and to create more elaborate plots using SimPy and matplotlib altogether. Let's understand a little better how SimPy leverages matplotlib under the hood. Here I am with the same plot function and passing the expression for the model volume at 25 degrees Celsius and the same range for pressure and the uh, y-axis, okay? But be aware that I'm also passing here a new parameter with show equals false. What this means? This means that the plot now is not going to be presented. We are only defined a plot without showing it to you. This means that I can assign this plot to a variable here. So I'm defining a p variable for plot and here we have this p. Now this p is just an instruction in this memory address, okay? I can order the graph to be displayed with this show method, okay? So here we have the same plot that we had before, but now I can order this plot to be shown only when I want. So let's explore a little better what is inside this p variable. We can see all the methods and attributes, all the public methods and attributes with this code here. So we have here, for example, append and extend. And these methods append extend are clearly list methods. So this P variable has some list methods. And we can also see here out scale, axis, margin, markers, X label, X scale. We have here clearly some plot methods. Okay. So this P object, this P variable, it has list methods and plot methods. Since it's a list, you can have a look in its items. So you have here the first item in this list, and you can see that is a line over 1D range series. 
this is just a line okay this is the line that we saw in the plot before and this line probably have some data points so let's take a look and what we have here in this first item with this code here and we can see that we have here this get data get points label line coral we have here some methods and attributes that deals with this line here with this curve okay this means that i can access the points that were used in that plot okay so here i am using this get points method and i can see here all the points that were used to plot that line okay to plot this curve here so this means that even though simpy deals with all this bureaucracy to build this plot to me i can get these points and build myself all the plots i can get the length of this array okay because here we have an array of arrays we have here this first one and then this second one so let's get the length of this array so we have here 65 and I can assign these points to a data variable and unpack this data variable inside the plot method of a matplotlib axis. Okay, so here we have the same plot, but now I'm building this plot from scratch using the plot method of a matplotlib axis. Okay, I'm not using here the plot function from SymPy the plot function that we've used before. So this is a plot that I'm building myself using the data points that SymPy created, okay? Since I want more isotherms, I'm going to create here a tuple of temperatures. So I'm defining here this tuple with, with Celsius temperatures. So I have here minus 100, 0, 25, 100, 500, and 1000 degrees Celsius, okay? But we need the Kelvin temperatures, so I'm using here this code to convert the Celsius temperatures to Kelvin, okay? So let's run this cell, and now I can pass for each temperature in this table, substitute all the symbols in the volume expression, create the plots but not showing them, get all the points and append these points in this plots list here that I'm defining here. Okay, so let's run the cell and here we have this plots list with all the points that I need. So I have here points for each of these temperatures. So now I can create this matplotlib figure add an axis to this figure and create a for loop iterating in this plots list to have here this amazing plot of ideal gas isotherms with isotherms for each temperature that we have defined before. So since SimPy use matplotlib under the hood, you can get all the points that matplotlib created and build the plots yourself. Now let's see the same idea, but for 3D plots. So let's remember, we have here this variable with our audio gas law, and we have here the volume expression. But for a 3D plot, we need two variables. So I'm going to replace only two symbols, the R1 with the gas constant and the amount of substance with the value one. So you have here the molar volume expression, and you can see here that I have T and P as variables in this expression. So now I can pass this expression for the plot 3D function from SymPy, and I'm passing here also the range for pressure and for temperature. So let's have a look. We have now a surface here. 
So we have here the pressure axis, the temperature axis, and the volume axis. And now we can do the same procedure that we have done before. So I'm passing here this show equals to false as a parameter, and I'm assigning this result to a variable called p. Okay, so here we have this variable p. This is a plot class, and this plot class is a kind of list with matplotlib items inside. So let's have a look. And this first item, we have here a surface over to the range series. So this is clearly this surface here. Okay, and let's have a look in its methods and attributes. So now we have here this get meshes method. Okay, since this is a 3D plot, we don't talk about points, we talk about meshes. Okay, so instead of the get points, we have this get meshes. Okay, so you can see here that we have all the values to create that surface. So let's define a data variable getting these meshes. And now you can create a figure and a 3D axis with matplotlib and unpack this data variable inside this scatter method of matplotlib. So now I have my own surface using the scatter method of a matplotlib axis. And instead of the scatter method, I can use other methods, okay? I can use, for example, the plot wireframe method. And now I have here a wireframe plot. And you can also use the plot surface method to have a surface, okay? So here we have a surface. And you can change the color map, okay? You can pass here this cmap parameter and you can pass any name here of a matplotlib color map. So here I am passing the rainbow color map and now I have here this surface using this color map. And since now I'm interacting directly with the matplotlib functions themselves, I can create an animation with matplotlib. So here I am with the same code as before, but I'm defining here this animate function, okay? And this function can be passed to this func animation of matplotlib where I can animate my plot, okay? So if you run this cell, you have this animation here, okay? So how this works, I am, this animate function has an angle parameter and this parameter is changed in each interaction inside this func animation class here. So we have here frames. I'm here with 361 frames with the interval of one. So this defines a 360 rotation because these are the values that are passed to this function here. So actually I'm seeing here the result of this animation here where this angle changes its value from zero to 360, okay? That's why we have this kind of visualization. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. In the link in the description below, you'll find a full article with all the codes and a text explaining everything so that you can have more details. I see you in the next video.